Okay, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Mind Game. Um, very special guest today. I know they all, I always say they all are special, but this one is, is really good. We don't really want to get into too much of the political scene, but I had to have this gentleman on because I've been impressed with him ever since I came back to Erie. So we're going to get things started regular saying the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Welcome, sir. Thank you. This is Mr. Thank Mursky. Um, everybody knows him in this area. You should if you don't, that something's wrong. Um, when I came back to Erie in, in 2016, um, that summer, if I'm not mistaken, you were the, um, the host of the Puerto Rican Parade. I was, you I, came down there. I know you came I down was, there. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was involved with the Puerto Rican Day Parade. As, as, um, I always make it a point whenever there's... Uh, uh, when I'm invited to things, mm -hmm. to be a part of it. And so um, the organizers of the event invited me down to speak to the group. And so um, I brushed up on my Spanish. Oh, hablo okay. un poquito, pero muy malo. Okay. And, uh, and so I just, you know, I wanted to, to honor the, them for being part of our community and, and being um, part of our, our eerie fabric. And when I was asking the people, um, who is that gentleman? Because, like I said, I had been gone for 15, almost 20 years. I yeah. really didn't know anybody. They was like, oh, that's Mr. Mercer. He's on city council. And I was like, oh, right. okay. You know, and I saw all the, the attention that you were getting, not just from the organizers, but from the people in general in the, that were in the parade or at the parade attending. And I said, well, you know, he must be well-known and doing a good job if they, you know, they recognize him like that. So I was, kind of, I was, I was really impressed, period. Thank you. Um, I've been following you um, throughout your career on city council and then I didn't know that you had any further political aspirations until you ran for the office that you're in. Now, um, I believe that, I'm from the old school, Mr. Mercy, I believe that people should do their homework, whatever field they're in, and recognize the people that came before them. And one yeah. of the first things that you did was probably the most impressive thing to me so far that you've done, and you've done other things, we're going to touch on that, but you recognize Flo Fabrizio right off the top. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, Representative Fabrizio, I, I've known Flo since I was a, a, a kid. I mean, when I was 19, 20 years old, he was okay. the county clerk and he gave me one of my first jobs. I was, uh, okay. he was the county clerk and I uh, had a summer job repairing voting machines when oh, back really? the old mechanical voting machines. So I had these the dinosaurs. very long, yeah, very long screwdrivers and I'd have to go in there and, and really? repair them for the summer. And, and, uh, and Flo was just always a, a, a good person, a genuine person, and a statesman. And then I really, um, you know, I, I've, we had, we, you know, parallel careers where I went into education. He was an educator as well. When oh, he really? was in, yeah, when his first that. job was a teacher. And so, uh, so, you know, we kind of had, had that in common. And then he went on and did other things before he was the state representative. But I always followed his career and um, always endorsed him and supported him. And, and he was always good to me, you know, and as a councilman, we worked well together mm -hmm. uh, when needed. Uh, and I think that, um, and then I ran for mayor and, and um, I really wasn't planning on running for anything after that. And um, when Flo announced that he wasn't gonna run again, mm -hmm. um, and it was announced that he had cancer, you know, it, my wife and I really s sat down and talked. And that was the first person we called. I said, I'm not gonna do this until I speak to Flo. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we, we, we spoke with Flo and uh, he, he said he'd think about it and um, he did and he got back to us and he gave us his blessing okay. to run and, and I wasn't going to do it unless uh, I had the blessing of, of okay. Flo and his family and, and um, that was important to me because I feel like um, whenever, you know, you're running for something, I always just want to help and I think that was okay. one of the things that um, my parents taught us, give back. Okay. If you're given, give back and so... Um, this is how I know how to give back, and, and it's not always easy, mm -hmm. especially with social media. There's a lot of criticism right. out there, and, exactly. and you know, a lot of times it hurts my parents and my wife more than it hurts me. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, this is how I know how to help and how to make a difference. And okay. um, and so yeah, but Flo taught me. He was like a, a a mentor in the sense of we would speak every week and. You know, just the advice he would impart. He never told me what to do, okay. but he would tell it in, in like the form of like either a story or okay. where you knew that there was a message behind exactly. it and you knew there was a meaning okay. to what he was getting to a point to it. And I think, you know, the big thing is stay true to yourself, 
stay true to your constituents and listen to the people. I think as, as long as you do that and, um, you know, remember that, you know, this is really always about the people at the end of the day. And sorry. That's, you're rep there to represent the people of Erie, Bell Valley, and, um, and Summit Township. And so okay. that's, what, that's what he taught me. And the other thing that I really respect about him, and much like my father, is that um, he treated everybody the same. When you go to Harrisburg, the janitors, the secretaries, the clerks, everybody has nothing but good things to say about a flow. And, okay. and so that, to me, is a mark of your character. Exactly. When, when you treat everybody the same, whether they're the lieutenant governor or the governor or the you know, speaker of the house or whether they're the janitor cleaning mm -hmm. the toilets, I think that, that to me, and, I, and my dad was the, the same way, treated everybody the same. I try to do that myself. And, and those are, that's the kind of life I want to emulate is people who, mm -hmm. who uh, treat people with dignity, people who are in it for the right reasons. And, and that's really what I, I try to do. That's, that's Flo's legacy to me. Well, um, to have somebody of that stature um, that you're able to go to and have those conversations with, I want to touch on, um, it wasn't so much what, what I'm getting from this, it wasn't so much as, as, as what he said was as to how he said it to you. Right. And you got that message. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, Mr. Mursky, um, everybody can, can, can talk the talk, but if you walk the walk like what you're saying, yeah. um, that's how you're going to be remembered the same way. Absolutely. You know, Thank um, you. I've never heard anything bad about you. I don't know, you know, but <laughs> it's always somebody out there that could dig up something that you'd have forgot or whatever. Give you a you list. Know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a short list. <laughs> but when you did that, just to close on that, when you um, recognized him and then came on my show and told this story um, about your relationship, that's a beautiful thing, and um, <clears throat> I'm sure if you continue on down that path, the janitors on up will be saying the same thing about you. Let's talk about the, um, <clears throat> the state funding um, that you got for the nutrition program yeah. for Erie Rise Leadership Academy. How did that come about? Sure. Well, they applied for it, and, and a lot of times what happens is um, when people apply for grants throughout the um, district, it, it'll come to the state reps, and, and you know we have to advocate for it, and, and we support these programs. And the state awarded Erie Rise uh, a grant for their breakfast program. And what will it, it will allow them to do is um, to have, they're called grab and go breakfast. Okay. A lot of kids today are in a rush. They're coming uh, just on time to school. Okay. And they were missing breakfast. And okay. so um, rather than go to the cafeteria now and sit down and have a formal breakfast like you do for lunch, uh, we now will be able to offer grab and go where they'll be able to get a, a, a yogurt with granola in it, a milk, and a piece of fruit. And okay. so it'll allow them to eat it real quick and then get to class, fill their bellies, because we know, studies show that if a child has proper nutrition in the morning, they perform better in school. And so this is, the breakfast program was already there. Um, it's been in, in place for like five years now, between three and five years, there's been breakfast programs throughout the public and charter schools uh, okay. throughout uh, the city of Erie. But what this will allow them to do is make it more accessible uh, to children so that uh, it fits, you know, how kids are today. Kids, exactly. they, they uh, a lot of families don't sit down to a formal meal anymore. Throughout so, the whole day. <laughs> absolutely. And so this will allow them to get that uh, proper nutrition, fill their bellies, and be ready to learn uh, at 8 a.m. Um, as we all know, or most of us know, he is from the education um, um, background, and, and what I didn't know was what role he had played throughout his career in education, but being a secretary every morning over there at Pfeiffer Burley, I'll see exactly what you're talking about, and, and when you see those things firsthand, you can appreciate them giving the money to Erie Rise to, to get that grab-and-go breakfast in. It's very nutritional yeah. as well. And the, the city of Erie, they received one, a grant, a similar grant, uh, I believe it was either last year or the year before. So they already offer in the city of Erie School District a lot of the grab-and-go uh, food for the, the kids so that they're able to get that nutrition. You know, um, the criticism is that we shouldn't be feeding kids and, uh, you know, that they should be fed at home. But the reality is um, even our, our, you know, this isn't a program just for kids in poverty. 
parents work and parents have to be at work at sometimes leave at six o'clock to be there. So they're dropping their kids off or they're mm -hmm. taking their kids uh, and they're latchkey kids, you know, exactly. that's what we used to call them in the 80s. And, but they, you know, they're taking care of themselves till they get to the bus and get to school. So um, to provide this kind of nutrition uh, is critical if, because we know that kids aren't successful if we don't, if they have hungry bellies. Exactly. We know from data, from, from research, what makes kids successful. So we have to do what we need to do to make kids successful. And I think this is one of those things where times have changed um, and we just have to adapt with the times if we want our kids to succeed. And I think we all agree, or we should agree, that we want our children in this country to be better than the generation before. <laughs> you know, Mr. Mercy, I mean, sometimes I really think that a lot of people don't get that and I don't see why. You know, now, um, I'm glad you touched on it. It's just not a program for poverty because just like you said, there are kids all across the board whose parents can't get to work, so on and so forth, for whatever reason, and they're getting that breakfast and enjoying that breakfast. Now, mm -hmm. that grant, what they got, was that a one-year deal or one-time thing? Or Well, this will allow them to purchase the equipment so that they ha they'll be able to offer that from here on out. So they'll be able to get, like, the portable cooler okay. uh, so that they can put a kiosk in, if you okay. will. Uh, much like they do at the airports with the like little Starbucks and whatever, <laughs> things like that. So, okay. but they'll be offer, able to offer fruit, milk, and the and the um, the dairy to keep it cold. Okay. The, you know the yogurts and and, and the, the cold cereals that we have, the dry cereal with the milk that the kids get for breakfast. So if Erie Rise is there next year, it's been a little little rumbling. Um, they'll be able to continue this program. They should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Um, first year, representative. Yeah, how's it been? I mean, it's been really good. I, I I love the job. Uh, okay. I really enjoy the work. Okay. Uh, the The hardest thing, honestly, is for my family, just being away from my my wife and my son. Okay. I leave Sunday, and you know, I, I come back, you know, Thursday morning. We have Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and so just being away okay. um, is, is the hardest thing. I don't mind the drive so much. I'll put a book on, you know, either audible.com or book, get a book on CD from the library. Okay. And I listen to a book on the way down and, and back. And so uh, the, the ride itself I enjoy. It, it allows me some time to do, uh, catch up on some reading or listening that I wouldn't do normally. Okay. Um, and the work itself is really rewarding in the sense of you're able to help people. At city council, it's a lot different because it's much more nuts and bolts. It's um, we're, we're repairing streets, we're fixing parks, um, police and fire, okay. and this level is much more policy driven. So you have to, when you're making decisions, have to think, okay, how is this going to affect Philadelphia County with 4 million people and Forest County with 6,000 people in the whole county? Okay. And make it work for everybody. So that's, what I think, the challenge. Sometimes Pennsylvania is a big state and a diverse state uh, when it comes to uh, population, when it comes to uh, the way, you know, people live. You have very rural, very urban, and then you have suburbs. You have all okay. three. Okay. And um, so how do you get things to work so that it works for everybody? Uh, the tough thing, too, is um, I'm under, you know, Flo had 16 years and he was a a leader in the Democratic uh, caucus okay. in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Um, Pat Harkins has now assumed that mantle for our delegation. He's, okay. our, he's our leader for uh, this area. And, and for this area. And, um, and, and, you know, Ryan, Representative Bizarro, works hard as well. Okay. Uh, he's been there for some time. So I'm a freshman, and so um, much of the way Harrisburg works is through the seniority system. So. And there's a reason for that. You have to build those relationships. You have to understand, um, you know, what departments what. And so I was very fortunate because of my work on city council, I got uh, chosen to be on local government committee and urban affairs, which okay. is a passion of mine. And also um, fish and game commission or a committee rather um, because of Lake Erie. Okay. And uh, my father has a, a good hunting background. And <laughs> I, I uh, unfortunately, I got skunked a couple of years and I said, that's not that's for it. me. That's but uh, but we grew up uh, hunting and fishing. And so, okay. and then uh, then gaming oversight because the casinos in our, our district. So, that's uh, kind of so those are good committees. Range. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I'm learning a lot and it's a really, uh, as an educator, I love to learn. So this is a, a good learning experience for me. And uh, uh, 
being on city council has prepared me for it in the sense that I know a lot of the systems already and I've built relationships with some of the people. So we're working on some legislation now. Hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able to get some of it passed. Right now we have a letter circulating for co-sponsors uh, working with the Sisters of St. Joseph here in town. Oh, really? They want to, um, one of the things, over uh, 150 young people are trafficked every year, human trafficking in Pennsylvania. Uh, basically, uh, it's a mo like modern day slavery. Okay. And so uh, one of the things that we're working on is putting just signs on the bathroom stalls with the 1-800 number for uh, the trafficking uh, prevention so that these people who are trafficked when they go to use the restroom at the truck stop okay. or at the um, rest stops on our interstate, they'll be able to have access to that number and it's a really easy number to remember if they don't have a cell phone or if they do, they can call right from the restroom while the person who's trafficking them is outside waiting. For them um, to come out. So oh, that's if, excellent right you can there. save 150 lives. That's to me, it's, it's worth printing the paper, the stickers for Oh, ain't no doubt. So and that 150 lives um, has impacted to the point to where it's over, you can could, you could say close to, to 2,500 because that 150, you looking at the parents, yes. the friends, the relatives, the school teachers, everybody that had a relationship with the people who are trafficking Absolutely. is affected. And, um, and who came up with that? This, well, actually, the sisters came to me with, through their social justice uh, network, and uh, they, they came to me and, and asked about it, and I said, well, let me try, and I'll put it out, and we'll see how it goes. And so far, uh, we have about you know nine, nine or ten co-sponsors that signed on to it. Okay. Uh, reps from Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Erie, uh, representatives Bizarro and Harkins signed on. So uh, we're excited. Hmm. Hopefully, um, we can get the leadership. Um, uh, the way that the House works is, you know, everything goes through the Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can get the Speaker on board, he'll put it in a committee, and hopefully, we can run this bill and, and help some people out. Huh. Well. It goes without saying that's that's becoming a huge part of society. I mean, you can't go anywhere and get any type of mail or anything um, without seeing the, the exploitation of kids yeah. and even adults. Um, the, the the reasoning that I think that um, you're going to be successful is that just within these whole 10, 15 minutes that you've been on this show, you've explained how things work. A lot of people don't know, um, Mr. Mursky, mm -hmm. how any of the, the politicians' jobs, um, the protocol is. And you yeah. just explained that in great detail, and I really appreciate that because if you go out and ask the, the, the common citizen, what does the House of Representatives person do? Right. They wouldn't know. And just in this brief period of time, you've explained that. Game Commission, you touched on that. Are yeah. you in favor of Sunday hunting? Well, you know, I, I, I don't have a position as, uh, right now I'm just gathering feedback from, the, uh, from my constituents. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm also, you know, I haven't taken a position yet because I want to hear from the people. I do hear from some of the folks that live out that way um, in those rural areas that they would just like a day of rest where they can the walk their dog and okay. not have to worry about gunshots. But the flip side is I do understand there's only three states that do not have Sunday hunting. Pennsylvania, Maine, and Massachusetts. So we're okay. only one of three states that does not offer Sunday hunting right now. And um, technically, and when, when I say hunting, I mean, uh, we're talking about deer, okay. basically, because we are allowed, you're allowed to hunt coyote and, um, you know, some of the, the predatory animals already on exactly. Sundays. And so um, I really, this one, uh, I'm not opposed to it, you know, but I'm waiting to hear some more feedback from my constituents and, and really listen to what they have to say. Okay. But I'm not opposed to it, uh, you know, if, if it comes up for a vote. I would be willing to vote for it. That's excellent right there. He ain't shying away. He told me all what's going on. Um, yeah, I saw that on there about the, the predatory votes, and particularly the coyotes, how they yeah. are in the population now because they're, 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 they're targeting other parts of their livestock. So that's, yeah. that's pretty interesting. It's a really big problem in, in the south uh, east mm -hmm. of the, the state. There's that's a lot of coyotes down that way. The other thing that's coming up um, uh, is uh, there's a disease, uh, it basically, um, it's kind of like mad cow disease, but for deer, and it's chronic wasting of, of the deer, and so that that's something that's creeping into Pennsylvania from other states. Uh, it's a disease that we got to keep track of because 
uh, it can really affect our deer population. Okay. And so it hasn't affected the Northwest so far, okay. but um, that's something that the game commission's keeping an eye on. Okay. Uh, it, it's very important. And then on the fish side, the same thing with the invasive species that are coming in okay. and making sure that um, you know, fishing's a big, big industry in Northwest PA. Yes, it making is. Making sure that we uh, have our stock fish and then also that the uh, invasive species don't overtake anything. You know, that's okay. a big thing right now. What's on your plate the here and now? You know, I think the big thing is just getting out to, in the community, uh, working with the constituents, constituent services. We have some, um, uh, this summer we're going to do a walk program, going through the district, uh, just talking to people. Okay. And we are uh, in the process right now of hiring uh, an intern. So if anyone wants to uh, apply for that job, uh, we uh, just go to repmersky at pahouse.net and mm -hmm. give your resume. We'd love to have uh, you know as many applicants as possible for that. We're looking for diversity in that, either you know women and minorities as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're not opposed to hiring a, a white male, though, but, but we would like encourage encourage diversity, and um, just to get out in the community, listen to the people. Um, the other thing that we're working on right now is a, a back to school event. We're uh, probably going to partner with somebody who's already doing something, but uh, okay. Education is important to me. It's it's exactly. what a part of who I am as a exactly. person. Yes, it so is. So to make sure that um, the kids have the materials they need okay. uh, going into the school year. And a lot of times what people don't understand is the teachers spend hundreds of dollars. That's true. Hundreds of dollars on the kids. And so if we can... Uh, alleviate some of that expense for them, then they get more money in their pockets for to feed their families and exactly. take care of their families. Because that's what they're taking it from. They're taking it from their own paychecks. Um, quickly, the donors choose, they're doing a lot. They're helping the yeah. teachers out a lot with that program. Um, I saw that for you, for everybody who's out there listening and, and watching this program, you can go and get a lot of information if you get um, uh, Representative Mursky's um, newsletter. Yeah. And you can get that online. Okay, and, and, and everything, what he's talking about today, I just looked at it, and it had the, the internship um, piece yeah. on there. So check it out, and uh, it's very informative. Now, um, the teacher's salary, mm -hmm. what, where you stand on that? Uh, I believe that we should raise it to 45000 You know, a lot of these teachers are coming out with $80,000 in debt. Right now, it's the minimum teacher salary in Pennsylvania is $18,000. Okay. $18,000 for somebody who's has to get a master's degree to teach in, in the schools. Uh, you can start with a bachelor's, but you have to end with a, a master's within three years, or at least 24 credits towards your master's after three years of teaching. So um, it's important that we pay people. And we also know that um, we're losing teachers at a rapid rate because the private sector for that level of education pays more than education. Exactly. And so, and, it, and teaching's changed even from when I started in the mid 90s till now, um, you know, the society doesn't respect teachers as much, parents don't respect teachers as much, and kids don't respect teachers as much. So a lot of times our young people are looking at this and they're looking at their teachers being disrespected and they say, why would I go into this? That's a valid point, a very valid point. And you know, I think that in society today, if you really have your head where it should be in the thought process, other than the firemen and the policemen and being a parent, the teacher is, is the most important job. And I think. think the other thing too is we have to understand Pennsylvania is a big state. So what ends up happening is 45,000 seems like a lot for a place like Erie. Mm -hmm. But then when you go to Pittsburgh, Allegheny County and the suburbs of Allegheny uh, the, and Philadelphia County and the suburbs surrounding that, <laughs> 45,000 isn't even a livable wage a down livable in there. Wage. And exactly so, right. uh, so when we look at you know those numbers, it, it might seem like a lot for people in this neck of the woods, but statewide, um, and when you look at other people who have a master's degree, um, teachers are getting paid almost 20% less than, than exactly. the average for someone with a master's degree. So the 45,000 does a little to rectify that, and that's a good starting point. Um, and basically, it just puts us back to where we were in the 1990s exactly. with teachers. Exactly, I know before I left here, um, late 90s, um, early 2000s, I think it was like 32,000. That was a, a good comparable wage for this area. Yeah. But some point as far as along the line, the, the salaries has gone off. Well, I think the other thing too is we have to remember, these are the people who we entrust to take care of our kids <laughs> for the majority of the day and not only take care of them, but educate exactly. them. Exactly. Their value is 
you can't put a price tag you on not. that. You, you can can't not. put a price tag on that. Now we do have to pay them, you know, a, a fair wage so that they're able to stay in this job. Many of the teachers, uh, my friends, we all worked two jobs. We had to, and so um, this will allow teachers to work one job and do it better and do it well. And then you look at one one part of the equation that a lot of people don't talk about. The majority of the teachers have kids at home yes. that they got to teach the kids, parent the kids, and then go home and do the same thing. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I have so much respect for the for the teaching profession. Even before I got back into the education system, it's not even funny. Yeah. We got to wrap it up. Final thoughts. It's about people. At the end okay. of the day, government is for the people. I was a social studies teacher. For the people, by the people, from the people. That's what government's supposed to be. That's why it's so important for me that we take care of people because that's what government's supposed to do. We have to make sure that people have the conditions where they can work and raise their families and live uh, with you know, that pursuit of happiness. That's what it's about. So if we can pr provide that and um, let them uh, be successful in life, that's really what it's about at the end of the day, helping people. Well, Mr. Mercy, um, th the pleasure's been all mine because you come on here and, and like I said, you know, People can talk to talk, but you know, if you walk to walk like what you're talking, um, I don't see why it ain't gonna be more than just a House of Representative. I, don't, I can't read your mind and know if there's other it's stuff. Just, look what he's doing. We're good for this. Look what he's doing right now. We're good right no, here. No, no further further. <laughs> um, but I mean, you got the right idea, and especially with so much discontent and distrust in the government these days by the people, because just like you said, the government is supposed to be for the people and help the people. and, and we need more people such as yourselves in Harrisburg and in Washington trying to do that, you know. So um, just continue to make us all proud in this area. Thank you. Um, and, and me personally, I, I expect to see bigger bigger things from you. Well, thank you. Okay. If, and, if we can just keep doing what we're doing and if we, like I said, and I said this to, you know, if we can do half a good a job as Flo did, we're going to be okay. 3901 Liberty is our office. Everyone's welcome to stop in. And um, we'll help you as best we can. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, Mr. Mercy. Thank the you. pleasure's been all mine. And um, we'll see you again. Thank you.